There's an awesome new feature in Google Sheets that allows you to immediately get statistics and charts based on a column without having to do anything. My name is David Ryan and I have plenty more videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Teams, Zoom. So please give me a like button if you like what you see and consider clicking that subscribe button. So you just click on the column and it will tell you how many there are of each entry. If it's a text column, it will also tell you, for example, uh, the numbers of the most and then the least sorted from bottom to top. And it will give you some summary statistics at the end. Really, really easy to do. I'll show you that in a second. But let's look at a numerical column. So this, it does give you a count, but if that's not very useful for you, you can go to distribution and it does group them in a histogram. So this is anything between nine and 10. This is between 10 and 12. Or for larger numbers, it will just choose a bin size that's appropriate. Uh, you can't really do much with it or change it like you can in normal charts, but it is pretty good in that it does it for you in a second. <laughs> so distribution, this is a histogram for numerical columns and count is the only one that works for text columns. So to get it going, I'm going to click the X button. All you need to do is select a column and then go to data and then column stats. Uh, that's it. That's all this is. You can't really do much with it apart from move between the columns and hover over points to see them pointed out and then view it. So it will tell you, for example, the total rows on the empty cells. Notice that it says 999 because even though my data stops at row 128, 999 is the total number of rows in the worksheet of which these are empty. So it's not that useful in that sense. Number of unique values, the total sum, average, median, the minimum, and the maximum of all the values. If you go into a categorical field, it will show it to you like this, and it will only have total, empty, and unique. Notice it still has 999871. Uh, if you go to a sort of free type text column, it's not very particularly useful because people can type in whatever they want. Um, sometimes there are repeats, but generally there isn't in this case. And the other thing it can be good for is spotting outliers. So if you have something that looks very, very high compared to the other data, it will show it to you here. Uh, it's not great for dates. So for dates, it will show them like this in the count. In distribution, it will group them by number. But here I have a bit of an outlier that's hard to see otherwise, because if I point to this, this is a numerical column, but it's saying it's very different to the rest. So Excel and Google Sheets stores every date as a number. And if I select this whole column, go to format number, and then I just do automatic, you can see that these are all formatted as numbers. And that's what this represents. That's just how it needs to store it so that it can keep them sequential. Now, why is this one different to the rest, even though it looks the same? If I go to format and then number and choose this date, I can see that this first one is in 1920. So that's what it's showing me here. So it's really useful to kind of know that fact that you can get very easily there. What you have noticed probably is that I have no headers in my data. In fact, this sheet is called no headers. With headers, it doesn't quite work as well. Uh, I think this is a bug they'll eventually sort out, but it does include the header name in that title there, uh, which is basically almost never what you want. Over here, I can see there is one version of employee and the chart shows it to me like that. Not particularly useful. You can kind of partly get away from that by using freeze panes. So click on the row you want to freeze, even just a cell is fine. And then choose view, freeze panes, and then freeze up to current row like that. What you'll then notice is that if I go to least for this column, then I don't see the name of the header location but I do see it in this chart. So I assume this is, again, a bug that will be sorted out. It also doesn't sort it for you, which would be nice in this context, but it does give you a very, very quick way to look at your data. So I really like this brand new feature in Google Sheets. Historically, you'd have had to build pivot tables and then a pivot chart on top of that to get to the same behavior. It would take you a lot more clicks. Next up, we have Explore, which is the same concept, but for your entire data set. So Explore is something that's quite hidden because it's on your bottom right. Nothing else is there. If you select your data, Control-A, click on this Explore. 
it will then look at some analysis about your data. So there's a few different parts to this. Uh, here it's just giving me a count of everything, but sometimes it gives you a little bit more. You can edit the range. This is the range. So unlike column stats, it stops at the end of the table, which is nice. Then you have some questions. I'll come back to that in a little bit. You can add some formatting like this. I really like this subtle feature in Google Sheets. It's the same as clicking alternating colors there. Uh, let me exit out of that. Alternating colors allows you to yeah, change the color there. Be more granular if you want with your alternating colors. Uh, and then it does automatically expand as well. So if I add a new column here, all of the formatting comes along with it. And equally, if I add in new things here, then we get that same sort of dark light effect there. This is the border, the hard border that I made before this. But it's a nice little tool. It's not like Excel tables that does stuff with the formulas, but it's just for viewing purposes. All right, so back to Explore. We also, we don't get that now that I've got one already. We get pivot tables and in every case I can click more. So if I want, this is an average of income by item. But if I click more, I can get more other types of pre-suggested pivot tables. It focuses a lot on the average, which I tend to not use. Usually I would do a sum like this. But if you like what you see, you can click plus to insert the pivot table. And then it will just create the pivot table with all those details. Or the other option is you can just zoom into it and see it like that. So you can also do some charts. For example, here you can say, well, more if you want to see more charts. This is looking at uh, correlations. So this is a scatter plot of units versus income. You're, it's not too surprising that they are quite correlated and they increase as they go. Um, count of notes, this is not very useful because the notes column is never what you want to look at. But location, this could be quite nice. And you could always add the chart like this. And it will pop up here. Sometimes it's hard to find it. You have to scroll to your data to find it. You can edit the charts like you can in normal Google Sheets. This is just a regular object at this stage. In other contexts, it might give you something ridiculous like this. So it's not always that useful or putting things next to each other day by day. In general, it doesn't deal very well with dates, but you can exclude some data by saying you want to start in column B because A is my range. So it does also allow you to say how many rows for headers and it gives you a preview, which is quite nice as well. So if I exclude the dates already, I'm getting a lot more useful things like histograms, a lot like what I showed you earlier, but it deals with the headers a lot better. And again, you can just insert that whenever you want to do it. So this is how it is showing you the details. The last part of it is Q&A. So the Q&A, it can give you some suggestions, but you can also ask a question about your data. So I can say, for example, top three employees by gross profits. Look at that, it gives you the answer like this. Here it gives it to me in either a formula with a table or it gives it to me in a chart and I can change here which kind of chart I wanna see it in, which is pretty nice. Uh, if you say C formula, then it gives you the query function. So notice that it doesn't actually use a pivot table, but it uses the query function. You can rate the answers. If you give it a thumbs up, then it will give you more like these in the suggestions. If you get a, a thumbs down, then it knows it's not done very, very well. So you can ask a lot of things. So you can also say just uh, without the top three, but maybe for a filter. So you could say like units by location for Janice. And then this is for employee of Janice. It tells you what it's done. And again, you have chart or formula. Personally, don't like how pie chart is the default for a lot of them because pie charts aren't that great. 
uh, C formula can again give you these sort of query functions. Not always. You can also ask it for other things like, you know, total income for the UK. And then it will just give you this and C formula is a different kind of function. It's still <laughs> somewhat complicated, but it's, uh, it's, it's a decent kind of thing. Or you could say like lowest gross profit. It's just a minimum and a maximum. And it doesn't always work, particularly for dates, something like earliest date, it doesn't really know what to do. Sorry, I could not understand your question. It's also not great with partial matches. So if you say, for example, sales for United Kingdom, it doesn't understand the question, but it asked me what I meant. It has identified the UK might be United Kingdom, but it doesn't give me the exact answer of what I'm looking for. So it's not always perfect, but it's pretty good for a very, very quick view. Here is just some other stuff that might come up, like correlations of two variables, top three employees. This is why I already showed you with the query function. Uh, frequency, this is a histogram. How many units for the UK it just gives you a sum just as a number or top three months by income, unfortunately, doesn't recognize the word months. As I said, it doesn't really work well with dates. My name is David and I'm and if you like this video, then please give me a like and also subscribe to my channel because I have plenty more videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Outlook, Zoom, Teams, etc.